Okay, so let's start. So this is the first chapter uh, in my part four in the analytical chemistry one for B stack student. So this is introduction to electroanalytical chemistry. So first let's start. Uh, what is electroanalytical chemistry? So this is the field that try to develop uh, the new analytical methods that utilizing electrochemical properties of the matters or chemicals. So let's uh, think about it a little bit. So if you want to check the purity of the maybe drinking water or the water that is used in the lab, you can measure the components of it. So the pure water shouldn't have any component, right? So uh, how does this relate to electricity or electrochemistry? <clears throat> so now if you compare uh, drinking water or the water in the lab with sea water, you can see that the difference is maybe the amount of the ions like sodium chloride or potassium chloride, because uh, sodium chloride and potassium chloride, you, you can find it like most in the natural water. So these ions, if you have ions in the aqueous solution, it's gonna contribute to the conductivity. So for, you can measure the solution conductivity and this and conductivity of course is electric, electrical quantities or electrochemical properties of the sample. So this is one uh, part of the electroanalytical chemistry. But, uh, but we will not learn about conductivity here. It's too boring. Okay. Uh, the second example here is, let's say, vinegar. So there's a lot of way to uh, analyze the, uh, the level of the acid, which in this case is acetic acid, right? If you want to find out uh, how much acetic acid is in this uh, vinegar, you can do a lot. You can do titration, but that's going to consume a lot of time, right? You need to standardize your solution and you need to do some titration, which you, you can do it in next semester. I hope that you can come to the lab and do it. But there's another uh, fa a faster maybe way to do it, which is to, you know, that acid uh, has a proton, right? And then proton is, of course, the pH of the solution. If you have a high concentration in the acid, you will have lower pH. And you already know how to calculate this kind of thing from Ajahn Nakara's part. And, but we have the way to measure the pH, right? Which is you to use the uh, pH meter to measure the pH of the sample. And the principle of the pH meter or pH electrode is relies on the potential difference arising from the difference of the proton between the standard solution in your pH probe and your sample. And you may be confusing a little bit, but we will talk about it in the second chapter, which uh, it's gonna be better. But you can think about it. If you are good in physics, you will know, you learn that uh, potential, electrical potential is arising from the separation of the charge. If you have the two sets of the charge, one is in your pH, meter, pH probe, which is your standard, and one is in your sample. So now you have the sharp separation. So that's contributes to the potential, which we call it membrane potential. We talk about it later. And we, you can measure the pH based on this potential later. So this is the second example of electroanalytical chemistry. The third part, maybe the third type of electroanalytical chemistry so let's think about it as I think you have seen people use it before. This is the glucometer, right? To measure the glucose in your blood, maybe in someone's blood. So you pinch yourself and you get the blood and then you uh, put the, this uh, paper strip to let the blood flow to your glucometer and it reads out the level of the glucose in your blood. So how does this work? I believe, I, I hope that at least if uh, you are if you think this is like this uh, part four is too much at least you should be able to explain this to your parents like how glucometer works this is a very, a very uh, important uh, technique so uh, in this part you have some enzyme in your 
strip or maybe in your sensor, you have some enzyme which we're going to learn about it later. This enzyme can convert uh, glucose to hydrogen peroxide and your glucometer will oxidize uh, hydrogen peroxide and get the current because oxidation will give you the current, right? And the flow of the current is, and, and the flows of the electron is the current. So you can see that the if you have high level of glucose, you will have high level of hydrogen peroxide and you get more oxidation, which in turns out to be more uh, oxidation current. So this is three, uh, the third type of electroanalytical chemistry that we deal with measuring the current. And the techniques that we use in electroanalytical chemistry, we will call it electrochemical techniques electrochemical techniques. So let, let me write it down a little bit. So, uh, so this is our electrochemical technique, which, it, which we have a lot of electrochemical techniques, but uh, it can be categorized easily. So uh, to make you uh, like less confusing. But now you may have some question, like we have a lot of technique that, I introduce you on like spectroscopy and chromatography. So why why do we do electrochemistry? Even it seems to be like pretty hard. So there may be like three advantages here of using electrochemical techniques. So the first uh, advantage is that it is specific to oxidation state. For example, if your sample, let's draw some beaker. If your sample has both iron two plus and iron three plus some technique cannot distinguish it like some technique have let you have to burn everything and you're gonna see these as the iron zero so you cannot distinguish iron by those techniques but in electrochemistry uh different ions will give you different uh, electrochemical properties and in this way you can distinguish the oxidation state of the chemical species or even like something that more uh, more complicated like mangan like manganese right you have a lot of form like maybe manganese two plus maybe manganese upper uh, manganese ion something like that you uh, electrochemistry is specific to oxidation state so this is the advantage of using it the second advantage is that it also provides you further fundamental data like maybe stoichiometry. Uh, maybe something like from the data you will know like what is the stoichiometry of the react electrochemical reaction you can learn about the equilibrium data like uh, electrode potential which we're going to talk about it today and you will know like how fast of the electrochemical reaction can occur and some mass transfer as well i think it's really teach you like van dinter's equation right so that's kind of to summarize the mass transfer equation in the chromatography techniques, but here we could we will we can study the mass transfer in electrochemistry as well. And last uh, advantage is that electrochemical techniques and electrochemical devices are inexpensive, small, and portable. Uh, if you are like <clears throat> you are starting the lab, I think electrochemistry technique is uh, the cheapest one, and I put it here, the example of electrochemical device. So this is called potential step. This like, device can run a lot of electrochemical techniques and we will learn about it later. So originally, this is uh, very uh, large. The size of it may be like uh, si similar to your inkjet printer and you will need large cell, large beaker with large electrodes here. But electrochemistry can be small, you can miniaturize it. So these whole electrodes can be miniaturized to this uh, strip, we call it screen printed electrode. And this whole potential stat, which is very hard, you can miniaturize it to be this size. This is a uh, palm size. It, can, it is less, uh, smaller than your palm. And you can even make some fancy version of it, like you make this electrode as the tattoo, like this. 
So people in electrochemistry field are interested in making electrochemical sensor to measure the glucose and lactate in your blood. And one way to do this in this uh, picture is that you make the tattoo, you make the electrodes as the tattoo, and then you maybe put down your uh, measuring device later when you want to read out the device. Or maybe there is the Bluetooth or NFC device here, so you don't even need to plug something to your arm. To, yeah, and then you can read the glucose or lactate level remotely. So these are like the advantage of using electrochemistry. And the advent, the objective, like after you learn this, I hope that you you will be able to like define, classify, and compare several types of electrochemical cells and techniques. This is like the hint of the exam, right? I write the exam based on this objective. So the second is you should be able to explain and calculate the effect of concentration and associated equilibrium on the electrode and cell potential. Basically, you have to be master in using Nernst equation. The third uh, objective is that you should be able to describe the principle of electrochemical techniques. So we will learn potentiometry, voltammetry, and parametry. I didn't put it here. Electrogrammetry and coulombmetry and electrochemical instrumentation. There's a lot, you will learn it later again. And the fourth one is that you should be able to explain the electrochemical phenomena uh, underlying these techniques, like a lot of potential, how the current occurs, how the mass transfer in the cell, and their like, effect, effects in electroanalytical chemistry. And the fifth uh, objective is you should be able to use electrochemical data to identify and calculate the concentration of the unknown. Which, like, if you go to the lab, you will do this, right? You get some data. How does that give you the chemical information? And the last uh, objective, which is the advanced one, is to compare and choose electrochemical techniques, parameters, and instrumentation. Like you learn a lot of techniques. Your job is like, maybe I will give you some scenario. You should be able to choose the best technique or the best electrode, best instrumentation for that given problem. So this is our, our the objective that you should be able to do. And I already like sent the announcement that I put the review, reviewing video, the freshman electrochemistry revisited. I put it in the echo and someone already uh, watched it. And if you want to watch it later after this, you can go to the blackboard and go to echo and to watch this. This is a little bit long, like 46 minutes, but uh, this is to like squeeze maybe four or five hours from your Gen Chem 2 uh, content. So I try my best to make it short.